Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spear, and Calculator has all of its bugs fixed, and welcome to Age of Engineering Super Shorts. It's time to enter Age 2. In order to use a calculator, I need a power cube, and, you know, power. For my first power, I'm going to make a clockwork engine from forestry. I need a piston. Look at that mace reader go. Uh, furnace. I can't exactly re-record that. One clock, a steel mechanical component, a copper gear, and a clockwork engine. Sixteen coal dust, two coal balls, two compressed coal balls, and a power cube. It's that time again. It's time to build. That looks organic, right? I'm gonna make this mostly woody. Here's the floor. This room is going to be two stories tall because I've got some tall plans. Though I have windows here, I'd rather not have them over here because of things like the scaffolding and any other machines I may put. Now that I've finished all the walls and changed some things up, here's the finished product. This is mostly woody and has two floors. The floor here has Celtic green concrete, circular basalt, green rim black stable stone, and green lamps. The frames for the bottom part of the wall are green heartwood and zebra wood. This is also green heartwood. Baobab stairs lead up to the second floor. Here, the frames are Ipe and Desert Acacia, the Llama Carpet and Legacy Carpet Green Wool from Chisel. All of the glass is in light and clear glass. The rim of the roof is Magical Planks from X Utilities 2. And now back to your irregularly scheduled survival. As of recently, power cubes now properly output power, which means I'm probably going to store power with them for a little bit, so I'll put it right here, and throw my clockwork engine right here. Right click it to make it go. Once you let go of it, it'll start generating power. Now for an actual calculator. One calculator screen, a steel mechanical component, a bunch of buttons, a calculator assembly, and a calculator. Behold! I'll just put that right here in the corner. You can charge it up inside of the power cube. It fills out at about 1000 RF. Now it's time to graduate. Why crank an engine when you can use peat? Hog Earth is crafted like so, and it returns the universal fluid cell. So what's stopping me from just filling up nine universal fluid cells? The answer is nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'll set up my bog earth farm right around here. Place bog earth two blocks away from any block of flowing water or source water, and it'll eventually turn into peat. If you look at that little maturity bar over on the left, you can see that it grows just like plants with random block updates. Right-click on the calculator to open up its GUI. Put in two glass, and I can get stable glass. One piston, two steel mechanical components, two copper gears, and a peat-fired engine. I'll place it here, and give it a lever so it can run, once it has peat, that is. Just to keep up the aesthetic. Axley Edition's iron casing, yet another type of bronze, which I'll switch back to the bronze that works with the crafting calculator. Not to say that it doesn't work, but ore dictionary support in this version of Just Enough Calculation is limited, though the author is working on it. Bronze block, which thankfully turns into the right type of bronze, in a block cutting machine. One basic machine casing, four raw carbon fibers, two raw carbon meshes, two carbon plates, two mixed metal ingots, two advanced alloys, advanced machine casing, which uses steel plates, and an iron casing. If you click on a block with a calculator, it won't open. Four enriched gold dust, four reinforced stone. Can I just say that I love calculators or dictionary entries? Strong stone, hard stone, full gold. Very all-encompassing. Four reinforced iron ingots. And an atomic reconstructor. A reinforced pickaxe, a reinforced sword, and a PA wrench. Never mind, the power cube definitely does not output power. In that case, I'll just harvest some peat. I'll place my atomic reconstructor here, and don't worry, I'll get a better room later. With the engine and lever. As long as it's in deactivation mode, the atomic reconstructor will constantly fire, provided it has 1000 RF, because 1000 RF is required to fire a laser. If I right click it with a redstone torch, I can switch it to pulse mode, which is self-explanatory. Unwisely, I'll assume that all my viewers know what a redstone pulse is. According to the guide, I can now do immersive engineering. And as much as those mountains are calling me to build an immersive engineering platform, again, I'm actually going to build a big factory building across the river. But since I'd really rather not do another build today, I think I might just extend this one. Trust me, putting calculator, action additions, and forestry was not in my plans for this house until just now. But hey, why not? Never made such a woody house before, might as well try another thing new. I just installed the mod Unlimited Chisel Works by ASI, which procedurally generates chisel-type blocks for many different mods, especially forestry. This looks like a nice platform for an empowerer, but why just let it float in the air when we can give it stabilization? And look at the view we get. Heaven knows scaffolding like this isn't exactly realistic, but hey, I'm okay with this. And now back to our increasingly badly scheduled survival. Peat-fired engines produce only 10 RF per tick, so we're gonna have to go bigger. 56 treated wood planks, 48 treated sticks, 12 water wheel segments, and 3 water wheels. Some Inori crystals, a small storage crate for the actual addition section, 8 copper wires, 8 LV wire coils, copper coil block, and a kinetic dynamo. 11 Restonia crystals, 2 LV wire connectors, 8 LV wire relays, 
and an LV capacitor. According to my test world, this little number generates 67 RF per tick. It could generate more, but honestly, this looks so nice that I wouldn't like to desecrate it. Just look how lovely and natural this water looks. Today I learned water makes you go up scaffolding. If I place an LV wire capacitor here, it'll fill right up with IF, which is RF but with an I in front instead of an R. Right click on a relay, and then right click on a connector to attach a wire. You can only attach one wire to a connector. Relays, however, you can attach multiple wires to. Excuse me while I pretend this isn't completely impossible. This makes sense here, right? Now that I have all this neat infrastructure, that's going to be it for today's episode. I'll gather the materials and set up a nice big empowerer setup in the next episode. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!